Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. Let's talk some mountain weather. First stop is going to be up in BC where you have consistently seen new snow at Revelstoke. Uh, almost every single day, another 10 cm in the last 24 hours, 96 centimeters in the last seven days, and you are looking good in the extended forecast as well. To Colorado, a very windy morning up on the Continental Divide, 40 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. You're looking off to the east here from Loveland Ski Area. Beautiful morning sunrise here with some of those colors and those high uh, cirrus type uh, clouds. But we're in desperate need of new snow. It's pretty warm. It's been windy and absolutely dry. And there is some relief coming, but it's a bit of a wait. And very windy camera shot here from A Basin looking off towards the southwest. You can see the fuzziness, the camera shaking and having a hard time focusing this morning. Here's radar, and man, big high pressure across the west right now. The storm track is up here, coming out of BC, running through Montana. So most of the west is warm, warmer than normal, and dry right now. But that's going to change. Let me show you the, uh, the water vapor, kind of give you the big overview. So the whites and the blues are going to be your moisture, and here is your moisture flow right there. That's your storm track. So it's across the northern Rockies coming out of BC and that's it. High pressure is across most of the uh, the west right now. But look at this. Big dip in the jet stream over here. That's our next trough. That's the storm system that will shift the pattern on or after 1216. That's actually the first of three storm systems. It's going to meander for a couple of days but eventually it's going to build up to the north and then become large, a part of a larger shift, a, a bigger trough that kind of rotates in uh, to the west. So let me go to my bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing. So it's rough the next couple of three days through 1215. Very warm with a 10,000 foot elevation rain snow line at times. That is high for a lot of places. Then the pattern shift talking about this the last three days, comes on or after 1216 with the introduction of that first storm system. And there are actually three storm systems lined up in a series, a nice cycle. And each one will bring in colder air. That will force the rain snow line to drop to much lower elevation. So for example, at Stevens Pass, let's just use that. You know, if we're at 10,000 feet right now for the freezing level, with each of these storms, we're going to push it down to maybe two to 3,000 feet. So that means significantly lower, and that means snow for most locations. Crystal, Stevens Pass, Hood, uh, you know, Timberline, all of these places that have been way too warm will finally get cold enough to get snow. Here are your best odds of snow, the timeline. So for Colorado, You've got snow coming afternoon, evening of 1217, light to moderate accumulations, and then moderate on 1220. For Utah, moderate to heavy, 1217. Moderate accumulations, late 1219 to 1220. Heavy, moderate to heavy, 1221 afternoon through 1222. So that's how you read it. Even Tahoe finally gets some snow. 1217, it's been a long wait. Moderate accumulations, 1219, heavy, 1221, 1222. Um, let me show you the forecast radar. So we'll start this up here at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Saturday. And there again is your storm track right here. It's all running in that direction with higher pressures across the west. All right, let me push this into the future. So there's 5 p.m. Mountain Standard. All right, here we are going to Sunday. This is 5 a.m. Sunday Mountain Standard, 11 a.m. There's 5 p.m. Let's just move right through the 15th. There's 11 a.m. on Monday, December 15th. There is 10 p.m. All right, here we are on the 16th. So this is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Tuesday, December 16th. Notice the precip. That's our storm system number one. That will slowly begin to push down into the central Rockies. Watch what happens. So this goes to 11 a.m. This is 11 a.m. Tuesday, Mountain Standard Time, December 16th. Look at the precip, starting to move down to the south. This is the first storm. This is the one that really does the heavy lifting to try to break this high pressure. And then behind it, there are two additional areas of low pressure in the, uh, the forecast. So 
Things eventually change. This is going to take some time. Here are the atmospheric pressure anomalies. This is 1217. Look at what happens. So all that high pressure starts to get eroded by these lower pressures on 1217. And you can see what's happening. This thing drops right through um, the central and northern Rockies. This is 1220. Higher pressures down here. Here's your storm track right here. And there you're lower than, lower than normal pressures up there. So the storm track definitely shifts. This is Christmas. Uh, big area of high pressure across the, uh, the Great Plains. And here you're lower than normal pressures across the West Coast. Now we'll, we'll show you the comparison again. I've been showing you this every single day. This is for Christmas. I just showed you the operational right there. Now the AI version has a much larger or significant area of high pressure across Colorado, still affecting Utah and Wyoming. This is what we don't want because this actually has less action and more high pressure. So some interesting differences. Um, I really don't want either. I'd, I'd prefer to have a big area of low pressure right across the Rockies, but that clearly is not the case with either of these. Um, let me show you. This is a, a peek at where the atmospheric river might might be flowing. This is integrated vapor uh, transport. This is effective at 46 degrees north, so right at that Washington-Oregon border. Here's our big storm right here, 1516. That's the one that sort of breaks down the the pattern and brings in the moisture and the colder air. That's that's a moderate to strong atmospheric river push, so it does entrain some extra moisture. Storm on 1217. Storm on 1218-19. So it's followed by uh, two additional areas of low pressure and pushes of moisture. Total precip over the next nine days. So we're looking way out there. This takes us through the 22nd. There's a lot of moisture. Notice most of it is staying to the north initially, and then the dam breaks as that storm comes in on the 16th. Right there, everything starts to go to the south. And look at the yellows. So that's an inch. That's my break point. That's at least a foot of snow. And you've got that over the Tetons, uh, eventually over the Wasatch, over parts of the, uh, the Sierra near Tahoe, and parts of uh, Idaho, Montana. So eventually, once the pattern shifts, we bring in heavy precip. That's as if everything fell as rain. Here's a simple 10 to 1 snow forecast. Same thing nine days out. And where you see the deep purples, that's at least six inches. Where you see the bright pinks, that's at least a foot. And where you see the whites, that's at least two feet. And you can see it. There's at least two feet indicated there. Idaho, Montana, Tetons. Not quite in the Wasatch, but at least a foot in the Wasatch. Close to that, 6 to 12 in Colorado. 6 to 12 in the high Sierra, maybe more. So initially, it's very warm, but then eventually that storm comes in, brings the rain, snow line, the freezing levels down to much lower elevations, and we start to see significant snow. Here's my forecast. So again, we'll do this in two phases like we've been doing. Total snow for the next uh, two, two and a half days by the close of business on 12-15, nothing. It's all up here in the BC where we could still see some nice additional snow accumulation. But here comes the bigger shift. Boom, right there, 1216 through 1222. So again, we're looking way out. These are grand totals by the close of business on 1222. So this is all the snow that falls between 1216 and late 1222. I want to show you the contrast again. We'll go back. 1213 through 1215. And then the big shift, 1216 through 1222. So here's why I've got. I, I decided to go with the most optimistic snow forecast here. Just to show you what the limit or the maximum possibility could be here. So just keep in mind, these are probably very high-end numbers. They may be reduced, but it gives you an idea. So up in the Pacific Northwest, these numbers stand out to me immediately looking at feet, many feet of accumulation. 
As long as we can push the rain snow line freezing level way down, we'll get good accumulation. Now, I've got a couple of feet here through the Tetons. I don't think that's unreasonable. A couple of feet here across Idaho, it's possible. Good numbers through interior BC, those are definitely possible. Um, good numbers over whitefish. I've got 10 to 20 over the Wasatch. That's not unreasonable. And a bit of snow here for Colorado as well. Yeah, I don't. I, I think the pattern does make it into Colorado. I just don't think it goes deep, you know. So these numbers are are, are probably right where they should be for, um, you know, as far out as we're looking. I think three to eight is probably not bad. Uh, a bit over the uh, the Tahoe area, yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, somewhere right in there. Shasta, yeah, that's totally possible. So while some of these numbers are definitely on the high side. You know, if everything falls into line and we get the perfect setup, yeah, some of these numbers are possible. It just shows you, you know, how terrible the pattern is right now. and We just need it to shift. All right, looking at the Northeast, definitely some lake effect off Ontario, uh, coming off Erie and Michigan. And not a ton of uh, storm snow for the ski areas, although, uh, and on this, deep purple's at least six inches. Um, some of this may fall as rain, and that's why um, uh, some of these numbers just don't look that impressive. There may be a little bit of rain mixed in. Here's what I'm forecasting. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of like four to six inch amounts here, but I also bumped it up a little bit, maybe some eight to ten inch amounts up here through Snow Ridge, Whiteface, Stowe, J Peak, Tremblant, and Mount Washington. I think there could be depending on the mixing. And again, we're looking way out. These are grand totals by the end of business, close of business on 1222. I think we could be up there 8, 9, 10 inches. I'm a little optimistic there, but I think it's possible. Let's go back to the Western view. I mean, this is really the, the, the headline, the big story. So that's where we start. That's 1213 through 1215. And then here comes the big shift after 1216. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.